you're with Jan Radu from StampingElegance.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Perth in WA. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be making this double Z-fold card today. And I always thought Z-folds looked quite complicated until I figured out once you follow the, the measurements and the, the um, proportions of the inside Z matching the outside Z, it's really quite simple. So you can see it folds up really nicely there and then it opens up to be a really lovely display card. So I'm also going to draw your attention to this background that I've created here. I've created this from inking the old world paper embossing folder. So that's the folder there and um, there's a couple of ways you, you can actually choose to either ink the indented section or the higher section. We're going to be inking up our higher section today and then we get that really cool effect of that background in there. So let's get started. Just pop that there. So the sets of cardstock that we're going to need, this is the outside, let's call it the outside Z-fold. So I've got a half a regular half a regular piece of A4 cardstock in basic black and we're going to cut that at 14.8 so just in half by um, 21 centimeters and that's scored at 5 and at 10 and then the mats that we've got here are this one here is so they're all 14.3 tall and we've got two 4.5 centimeter mats and the larger one is a 10.5 and then the inside Z for this piece here we've got a black um, cut at 18 by 10 centimeters and we've scored it at six and a half and eleven and a half we'll do that scoring in just a moment and then the mats that we need are all 9.5 high so half a centimeter shorter and we've got a six we've got a four and a half and we have got a, another six so that covers all the measurements let's go ahead and make the card I'll bring my Simply Scored in and we'll just do the scoring first. So this one we are scoring at 5 centimetres and at 10 centimetres. And then the inside Z we are scoring at 6.5. So I've actually done a little mark here. So there isn't a 6.5 on the Simply Scored. So I just mark my cardstock up with pencil. So I'm making sure that one's at the six and a half and that one will be 11 and a half. So the other thing that you can do is just um, move it over half a centimetre on this side. So you're actually scoring at seven and 12 then because you've, you've shifted it over. So when you shift it back, you'll see your score lines are at six and a half and 11 and a half. This is really worth um, investing in this tool for doing fancy folds and also for boxes as well. So I'll just bring my bone folder in and we are just going to burnish our creases there. In there and on itself there. Okay, so you can see there then what we end up with is the Z. So the important thing here is that this measurement and this measurement are the same so that you end up with that nice balanced Z. So that's those ones. So the first thing we will do with the stamping is let's do our inking of our embossing. We're going to actually ink the high part so that it indents into the cardstock with the colour. So I've just got my Calypso Coral stamping pad here and I'm just going to generously ink over. This bit can definitely get messy. Probably should have put some scratch paper down first. Okay. And this is the important part here. You need to make sure that when you put the cardstock down, you don't move it because what you can end up doing is just smudging it along the ink. I'm just going to clean up that excess ink on the edges, which I don't need there. So what we're going to do is, so we're going to pop that down and then we're going to sandwich it into our embossing folder. So the sandwich I'm using in my Big Shot is my Platform Tab 1 and my Purple Adapter 
special adapter plate for the 3D embossing folders and I'll run that through the Big Shot. So that one's gone through the Big Shot there and when we open up but isn't that a great effect? I really love the way it's in the debossed section. I think that's very cool. So I'm just going to ink up again and we will run these smaller pieces through. And once you're finished, you can just simply rinse this underwater. Uh, it won't harm your embossing folders in any way. That one down there. Get my sandwich again and I'll run that one through. So we've got our larger piece there and there we have our smaller pieces. You could actually do like a, a rainbow effect of the ink either with a dauber or just sort of smooshing a couple of different ink pads. I think that would actually be really effective. I might need to try that one. I'm just going to go and wash out my embossing folder and then we'll continue on with the card. Okay, so I'll just bring in my larger Z. I should say Z. We say Z in Australia, not Z. So I'm just going to place those just to make sure. Yes, Jan, you have the measurements right. Now, if you had Stamp and Seal Plus, this would be perfect for sticking this down. I haven't received mine yet, so I'm going to use tear and tape. I just feel that if we use just the Stamp and Seal or, or liquid glue, Sometimes when you don't have a flat surface to flat surface, it just doesn't stick well enough for my liking. So I'll just go ahead now and I will add tear and tape to all of these panels. So now that we've stuck all those panels down, we can start to work on our mats for the inside Z fold. <laughs> um, so I have used the Timeless Tropical, uh, the bundle. So I've used the Timeless Tropical stamp set. Sorry, it's not sold as a bundle anymore. It was only the initial time it appeared in our mini, our last mini catalogue that you could get it as a bundle. Um, but it has carried over. Um, you can purchase the coordinating dies as well um, so I'll show you um, my glorious set of flowers and leaves that I spent an hour or so die cutting a few weeks back um, but I just used a combination of the flowers and the leaves that are in the die set so right now we are going to use the palm trees I've got a few clear blocks here so I've got the palm trees we're going to use the birthday sentiment Okay, that one there and we're also going to use the hello which is right there okay now we're stamping with red rubber so we don't need to use the stamp and pierce mat for that but I will just grab some scratch paper just to protect my surface from getting too inky. Okay, so we have got the larger piece, the palm trees will be in the middle, and then that will be the other sentiment. Um, so I'm just going to use my Memento Tuxedo Black for the stamping. I really liked how um, the, the elements are really quite simple in this card, um, but it all comes together to be very effective. So I like to just test my pressure and my ink. This is quite a sketchy font, which I also really like. I'm just going to line that one up. Nice even pressure. Let's do the hello. Now the hello is going to go right in the middle of that panel. Okay. And... For our palm trees, 
I like to have the stamp down and actually ink on top so that I can see what's going on in terms of have I missed any bits and as you can see with my card I just have this side is in frame and hanging off on the other side so we'll do roughly the same and I've also got my stems quite close to the bottom there okay I'll just clean off my stamps and then we continue with the card okay I'm just going to use my stamp and seal to pop those panels down on the inside it they should be dry now it's definitely worth um, giving them just a second to dry how are you all finding the stamp and seal I know a few people have had a little bit of a learning curve with it um, the thing that I love about it is it's just such a great strong adhesive um, definitely stronger than the snail that we had before I think the um, the stream doesn't always come out completely even but I haven't found that really to be an issue it doesn't need to be totally even to be effective I'm just paying attention and making sure that I pop these centrally in the panel and also that they're somewhat lined up along the top and the bottom. Okay. So that's my inside panel done there. So you can see the cards coming together nicely here. So what we're going to do, let, let's stick this down and then we can, I like to get rid of as many pe moving pieces as possible. I'm going to use tear and tape again, simply because we're going onto an uneven surface here. So this side, I'm going to use tear and tape all the way around that panel. But on this one, as you can see, we don't actually want any adhesive in this section here. So we're only going to go over on that side there. So what I'm doing here now, my card is closed and I'm compressing both of the Z's down and I'm just trying to move it around so that I've got a bit of an even border on that side and that side and up here and down here. So once I've got that in place, I can let that go. And you can either give yourself just a little pencil mark if you want to in there so you have an idea of where you're going to put it down and then we'll stick this side down and once we've got that nice and secure we can add adhesive to the other panel on the other side so again I can fold this there's no adhesive over here remember so if I line that up with my pencil mark and vertically make sure I'm quite happy with where it's going and when then I fold those down I get a fairly even around about. So now what I can also do is just put a little pencil mark under here as to where that other where is as to where the adhesive needs to end hopefully I can see that yep so I can make sure I don't put any adhesive in that section there okay and now all you need to do is close that side down and then close that side down give your adhesive a bit of a press and there we have it nice even Z fold so let me just show you how I decorated my card here. Um, I have one of our gold hoop embellishments. I absolutely love those. I've got some linen thread and I've got this wonderful collection of leaves and flowers. As I said, I um, picked my color combination and then one day just spent a couple of hours cutting them all out. Aren't they just gorgeous? The weather's starting to feel like spring here. So this card sort of does lend itself to that 
So I am going to use glue dots. Uh, they're going to be my friend for most of this um, embellish embellishing of my card. So what I'm going to do is uh, we'll pick my first flower. I'm going to put a glue dot right in the center. And what that's going to do is also leave glue in exposed in there so that I can add the coordinating center onto that flower. So I'll just pop that down there. And then what I need to do is find from my collection, take your pick tool helps with this. And I'm just going to pick up one of the coordinating oh, centers there was well, not really coordinating is it one of the contrasting centers there and pop that into place and you can use the other side to pop that one down now with the the hoop obviously all of the adhesive is going to be hidden underneath here so i'm just going to pop some glue dots sort of on this not directly i, I don't want it to be half and half just a few over there just to get my hoop into place dots it's really not going to go anywhere so now once now that it's secure i can cut myself a piece of the linen thread i'm going to double my thread and loop that through i'm going to pull both of those through the loop and create I don't know what that's called if somebody knows please let me leave me a comment and let me know and then we're going to use that as our anchor to tie our bow very fumbly fingers today Normally I pride myself on my bow tying. Okay, pop our tails underneath. Just shorten our loops there. And tighten our bow. Then I really like these long tails. So what I've done is tuck the tail back under the hoop and just kind of just stage them a little bit there. And this one as well, that one goes under the hoop on this side. It's just kind of staged there. And then you can trim them a little bit as you like. Okay, so we'll just make sure we've got enough of the glue dot there to hold down our hoop so I'm just going to go through and just pop another another couple on there they're going to be covered by the flowers do you remember we used to have large glue dots they would have come in quite handy here okay so now I'm just going to build my wreath um, and I'll just pull out a selection of leaves. So I'm not going to muck around with my choices. I'll just use what I used last time. I was really happy with how they came out. So we need one of those. One of those. Oh, we might need to pop the holes out of one of these ones here. Those ones haven't gone all the way through, but that's okay. I don't think you're going to see those once I layer them up. That can happen when your plates are a little old, or your pressure's slightly off on your Big Shot. Are any of you lucky to have received the stamp and cut and emboss yet? Definitely on my list, that's for sure. So I've got a little... Okay, so I should talk about the colours. So this is Bermuda Bay. Um, Calypso Coral, I've used um, Emerald Envy, but Shaded Spruce would be the compatible colour in the current catalogue. And of course, Daffodil Delight, which would you believe, there just doesn't seem to be another Daffodil Delight. So what are we going to use? We've got Bermuda Bay. Will we add in, we will add in the Blushing Bride. Can't believe out of all of those, I didn't have a... Um, 
or maybe we'll swap it out will we swap it out for a yeah i'll pop the uh melon mambo i think it is so now we're just going to use glue dots and layer them up Z fold or Z fold card using the timeless tropical stamp set from Stampin' Up and as you can see it creates a lovely display you can write your message in here um, alternately you could also pop a white panel on the back and you can put another message on there um, or if you've got a little, a little more to say to your recipient but there's a really nice bright summary card thanks very much for joining me I'd love to see you again soon mm -hmm.